Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. In today's episode, we're going to have a discussion, a brief discussion, about the possibility of the U.S. military changing its service rifle, the M4 carbine, a AR variant system, to essentially another semi-AR variant system, which is uh, the XM7 or the possibility in the very near future, the, uh, the M7. Once it achieves full operational capacity and it's handed out to a majority of U.S. Army and Marine units, if that happens, then it would go by the uh, the designation the M7. So the replacement, obviously, most of you are aware, is this system right here, the M4 carbine. I personally absolutely love this rifle. Obviously, in my military days and in in, in other uh, career pathing, I utilized uh, this weapon system. Very light, very accurate. Uh, depending on the optic uh, that you're using, it, it is an incredibly accurate and reliable modular weapon system that if uh, you were to see it replaced by said system here, which is a, a heavier uh, rifle that shoots a much larger uh, projectile, and, and I'll kind of get into that here here quickly, around the, the concept of, of just why the military is, is looking at this weapon system and uh, looking at replacing uh, the uh, tried and proven M4 carbine. Now, the, uh, the short answer is why. Why is the U.S. military looking at switching to this weapon system? Now, look, we've, we've heard, and, and most of you who have been paying attention to this subject are aware it is a heavier rifle, it has much more recoil, uh, it has a uh, integrated uh, suppressor, uh, the, the can on the front there that you can see. Uh, if, if you were to fire this weapon without the can, uh, again, a very, very loud weapon system. It, it, it shoots a 6.8 or the... 0.277 uh, Fury round. So just to compare and contrast uh, the uh, M4 carbine, usually you're going to be shooting a 62 grain round downrange that's traveling about 29 to 3100 feet per second, depending on the type of round that you're that you're using. But for folks in the military, uh, before they had switched over to this this new round that they're using. In the uh, M4, it was it was uh, in, in most law enforcement agencies in the U.S. are still using the 62 grain around as uh, as well. But if you look at the M7, again, you're looking at a round that is 135 grain. Okay, so twice the weight in terms of the the, the size of the bullet, and essentially very close to the same ballistics in terms of the speed of the bullet. So you're looking at a 135 grain. It could be more, it could be less, depending on the, the type of round the United States military ultimately uh, goes with. But you're looking at a round, uh, again, uh, low end 115 grain, all the way up to 155 grain in that 2,900 to 3,100 uh, feet per second. So very, very, in terms of the speed of the round, which which makes the the uh, the M4 uh, carbine so effective, is is the speed of that smaller 62 grain round does a tremendous amount of uh, of, of shock value when it when it hits a target. But again, and very accurate. Now another issue with this is you're you're decreasing the amount of ammo that you have available to you as a soldier or Marine. This weapon system, the M7, 20 rounds, versus an M4 carbine, 30, 30 plus rounds in some cases. 
So you do see a significant decrease in the amount of ammunition that could be carried by an individual soldier. But again, the question is why? Why is the U.S. military looking at this weapon system? And, and it's not so much the actual weapon system. Well, it is, but it is the round. It is the bullet that is being fired. In the U.S. military, in the case of these weapon systems, these rifles that U.S. soldiers carry, the U.S. military is not looking in the now, right now, and maybe two, three years into the future. The U.S. military is looking 5, 10, 15 years into the future. And that is why it is looking at making some of these changes. Now, in today's Army, it, it's going to be, or could be, a huge change for an individual soldier. Again, you're looking at a much uh, larger weapon system, different technology, more recoil, less bullets, and that is certainly going to cause change. And if you have uh, utilized the, the M4 carbine for the last 15 years of your military career, and you are very, very comfortable with this weapon system, and you transition to the M7, it's a change. Change is inherently uncomfortable. It is. Now, again, the U.S. military is not looking at the now. They, they understand this change dynamic is going to cause challenges. They understand that. But again, the question, why? Well, they're looking into the future. The U.S. military is looking into the future. They are looking at advances in ceramics, other material that is being used by possible adversarial nation states that has the ability to defeat the 5.56 millimeter standard NATO round. So imagine you wake up one day. You wake up in the not too distant future, 5, 10, 15 years, and you are facing that. Uh, yes, I get it. A little ridiculous, right? But this is the Army's mentality. This is the Marine Corps' mentality. Okay, we wake up one day and we are facing a stormtrooper. We are facing a stormtrooper. I and mean, we know right now that the M4 carbine firing the 5.56 millimeter 62 grain round would be completely ineffective against this target. What do you do? Well, this is what the Army is doing. They are preparing for this eventuality. Now, are we going to see stormtroopers on the battlefield? Probably not. But will we see soldiers, both the United States and adversarial nation states and allied nation states that may not be allied nation states at one point, fielding advanced types of armor that can make the current bullets the U.S. military is shooting completely ineffective? And the answer to that is yes, it's going to happen. It's going to take place. And the, the Army is very much aware of this. The Army is testing systems right now, uh, non-open source systems, within a soldier's kit in terms of armor and protection that is worn by a soldier that would make a round fired by an AK-47 be it a 7.62 by 39 or a 5.56, really irrelevant. So again, it's not so much as the now. The Army is not looking at the capability between the M4 and the M7 in the now. They are looking into the future. 
And they're saying, okay, well, we get that the M4 is lighter. We get that it carries more bullets. But if you fire 30 rounds at this stormtrooper and you can't penetrate the armor and it is completely ineffective, but here you have a round that in theory could defeat this armor in theory. And again, we're not talking about now. The current round, the 135 grain round that's fired at 3,000 feet per second of the 6.8 or the, of the of the of the uh, dot 277 fury that may not be the capability that we're actually looking at the military is developing capabilities and there is a round that they're testing right now that from what i hear is 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 a complete game changer when it engages some of these uh, up-armored targets, M more advanced body armor that is being fielded by the United States and obviously other nation states as well. So it's not the now. They're not looking at, okay, let's compare and contrast these two systems now. They are looking at the future, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, what is going to be the requirement to defeat some of these personal protection systems, body armor, full body armor in some cases, like your good old stormtrooper here? How do you defeat that? And this is their answer. Now, this may take some time. And again, it's, de it's, it's dependent on how quickly other adversarial nation states start to field high-end personal protection equipment, body armor for their individual soldiers. But I think uh, at the end of the day, other technologies are going to come into play. We're going to see other weapon systems that, that may even negate this weapon system that you see, that you see here again they're looking at they're using technology that they have and they possess currently and they're saying okay well we we're, we we want to engage this target and we, and we know we're going to be fighting something like this in the future what do we develop now that we could use against this adversary and right now this is the answer and is it ultimately going to be the answer? It's difficult to say. Again, I, I sit in the corner of the uh, current M4. I, I don't think this weapon system is a necessity right now. However, however, you do have to prepare for this. You absolutely do. And what does that look like? What is that next generation of threat in terms of personal protection, body armor, what does that look like? And we're we're heading into a a uh, a revolutionary age with AI, with the ability of uh, quantum computing to create, construct, and and even manufacture systems that would essentially make this weapon system completely obsolete at some point. Hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. And thus, you have the XM7, the testing, the development. It's not being used in all U.S. military units. Only a few select U.S. military units are testing the system. They're testing it. So if a battlefield commander were to say, you know what, I don't want this system right now, I can effectively use our M4 carbines, then I would suspect the army would say, well, okay, there's your M4 carbine, go to war. But again, these are developmental systems designed to eventually counter something like this. I hope this explains things a little bit, and you, you really can't be all 
against the M7 and all for the M4 or all against the M4 and all for the M7. It's a much more complicated scenario. And as military forces adapt and change and advances to technology occur, you have to prepare for that. And that's what you're seeing. That is why you're seeing what is happening right now with the uh, the XM7. So that's my take on it. Feel free to leave uh, comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for joining us. More to come. Good day.